Hello guys, thank you for watching this video. In this video, we're going to discuss the issue of slavery and the development that changes during the 1700s. During the 1700s, you're going to see a massive growth of slavery, and it's going to be a more integral part of the economy, life, culture, society, and the makeup of the colonies and into the United States towards the end of the 1700s. Just as before, we have some objectives, what things I want you guys to be thinking about. Uh, the objectives explain the cause and effects of slavery in the various British colonial regions, and also explain how enslaved people responded to slavery. Here is my argument. Slavery during the 18th century became an integral component of trade. However, despite slavery being used for labor in some colonial regions, all aspects of trade were dependent on slavery for the British Empire's wealth. As mentioned before, sugar and the West Indies and the Caribbean, for the most part, was becoming the center of trade and importance for the British Empire. Um, the triangular trade was a product of trading with Africa for slaves. Um, you had sugar and rum going also in Africa and then sending those slaves to West Indies to work on the sugar plantation, but also North America and then back, home, back to England for finished goods. The growth and prosperity were because of slave labor. Banking, shipbuilding, and insurance were stimulated by slave trade. So all aspects of this colonial society and England back home were stimulated because of slave labor. It helped finance, to some degree, the Industrial Revolution that will take place later on because of so much money that's, that's being made off the backs of slaves. Economic freedom and opportunity for the British, for many, was tied to owning slaves. Africa, uh, before, was a market for European goods. So they're selling a lot of their finished goods that it's occurring back home in these factories to the people in Africa. And in return, Africans that wanted these goods would raid the interior to capture people for slavery. African slavery did exist prior, but Europeans would tap into the market there in Africa and expand it tremendously. Demand for African slaves would change Africa completely. There's ramifications even felt today from the slave markets and the slave trade going all the way back into the 1700s. The loss every year of tens of thousands of young Africans would change West African society and economy for a long time. One of the most dramatic and sorrowing uh, experiences that occurred along this trade route was the Middle Passage, the passage between Africa and British colonial uh, North America and West Indies. Uh, slaves were packed into ships like cargo uh, because if they could get as many slaves in a ship they could, the price for a slave would jump 20 to 30 times more than what would occur in Africa. So profits could be made off of slaves. The height of decks between slaves was only about 18 inches. So sometimes these slaves were lying down and only had an 18 inch space uh, the entire vo voyage between them and the people above them. One out of every five slaves didn't make it. Captains sometimes would throw the sick overboard to prevent and spread disease. So while they're still alive, they didn't want to, if someone was sick, they didn't want them to spread disease to all the other slaves. They threw them over the ship into the Atlantic Ocean, um, even though uh, they were still alive. 95% were, were sent to Brazil and West Indies, and only 5% were going to North America, but that's growing in the 1700s. In North America, the amount of slaves that are being used is getting more and more important. So that would increase by the 1700s. Uh, in 1700, 20,000 slaves, but over time, 400 to 600,000 were imported. Next, let's talk about the differences in slavery that existed in the different colonial regions in North America. You have, of course, still tobacco in the Chesapeake, rice in Georgia and South Carolina, and you actually do have slaves in the North. Um, you have in New England slaves that, that are owned by families, and in the middle colonies as well, you have slaves that are, that are owned in cities and work in labor. You also have westward expansion in the South, so in the South, when you have Western expansion, so too slavery. 
Um, half of Virginia's white families owned the slave in 1770, and the elite gentry dominated society and politics, and part of that domination was through their wealth off of slavery. Slavery changed society into a place of varying degrees of freedom. Laws increased restricting black access to freedom, and that started happening, especially in 1723. Blacks that owned property before 1723, 1723 could actually vote in Virginia. After 1723, even if they owned land, they could not vote. That was taken away because they were black. Free blacks were a small part of Virginia because they had laws on the books that if someone freed their slaves, that those slaves had to leave Virginia. Lines across race and free were starting to be formed. The idea of freedom was now being associated in the 1700s by the, cl the complexion of your skin. In the Carolinas, you actually had large-scale importation of slaves due to rice in South Carolina and indigo in North Carolina. But it's different in terms of how they worked. In, in the Carolinas, you had a task-based system. The idea being is that once a slave completed their task, they had free time to do anything they want. So you have the development of, of African-American culture in the Carolinas because they have more free time to actually develop that culture. By 1770, slaves reached 100,000 in the Carolinas, half of the population. In the North, it was unusual, but you did have rich families own more than one slave. But it was very unusual for that to happen. Uh, it was small, but some did exist. Laws were less harsh than the South. You actually have slaves' marriages recognized in law in the North. Uh, you actually had severe punishment for people that abused their slaves. Um, and slaves could actually sue in court in the North, in New England. They could actually testify against whites, and they could actually own property and pass that property on to their children. So slavery wasn't the same everywhere throughout the colonies. It just depended on the region you were at. New York being a Dutch colony at one time, remember the Dutch before the British uh, monopolized the slave trade, the Dutch were the ones that monopolized the slave trade. So they had a larger amount of slaves in the North than other regions like New England. In 1746, New York had 2,440 slaves, and 30% of labor in New York was slave-based. For many cities, though, wage labor made more sense. So think about it. If the economy goes bad, you don't really want to be stuck paying a, a, a owning slaves and paying for the maintenance of slaves, it's better to hire someone uh, and pay a wage. So when the economy goes bad, I mean, as sad as it might sound, you can fire them. You don't have to pay those wages anymore. Whereas if you own a slave, that's a long-term commitment. So in the North, it wasn't a matter that necessarily didn't like slavery as much, with the exception maybe of Pennsylvania. But the issue was is that they felt that wage labor made more sense for the ups and downs of the economy and long-term ownership of slavery or slaves rather didn't make much economic sense so slaves represented a long-term cost that many were not willing to take if we discuss the development of slave culture and the early roots of african-american culture at this time you have to understand many of these slaves came from west africa uh, and religions var varied ra uh, varied widely um, in many aspects, West Africa religion resembled very striking similarities to Native American religion. Um, transitioning to Christianity was very difficult for them. They blended elements, though, when they actually did convert to Christianity with African beliefs. So you have a mixing going on between Christian beliefs and African beliefs that form unique African American culture or slave culture early on. Islam was actually a religion of some of these slaves coming over if, if they were more from North Africa. So you do have some uh, Islamic beliefs coming into the colonies at this time, but usually they're held by slaves. And finally, resistance from slaves. As long as slavery has been an institution and been around, there has been resistance. One form of that resistance could be simply slaves running away. And throughout newspapers in the South especially, you have advertisements of people putting rewards for their runaway slaves. You actually have the first slave uprising in New York in 1712. Slaves started setting fire to houses, and when the first people came in to see what was going on, they killed those nine whites who arrived 
uh, at the set fires. After it, 18 slaves were tortured and killed, and some burned alive for display for everyone to see to set a tone that slave uprisings would not be tolerated. Later on, you actually have the crisis in 1739 and another crisis in 1741. In 1739, you have the Stono Rebellion in South Carolina. Essentially, during the War of Jenkins' Ear, and yes, that's what it was called, between England and Spain, you have these slaves seize weapons. These were slaves that had just come over uh, from West Africa, and they seize these weapons, and they beat drums trying to attract other followers. Along the way, they burnt houses and killed whites and shouted liberty. And they got up to 100 slaves in this rebellion. About 24 whites were killed at the end and 200 slaves were killed at the end. This led, the effect of this would lead to more severe laws in South Carolina in the slave code. And that's part of the re constant effect of these slave rebellions is every time a slave rebellion happens, the laws become stricter. The treatment of slave becomes worse and more harsh. In 1741 in New York, you have the rumors that another rebellion is going to happen. You have rumors that Slaves are organizing help by a few whites to burn down houses and start another rebellion. Uh, essentially, this caused so much of a frenzy that people were scared. 150 blacks were arrested and 20 whites were arrested. At the end of it, 34 uh, slaves were executed, including four whites. So this hysteria and this fear because of slave labor and this fear of uprising will constantly occur throughout colonial society and into when America reforms the United States. In closing, the development of slavery is really going to take off during the 1700s and into the 19th century as well. The understanding here, though, is that slavery is going to be an integral part of the economy, society, culture, laws, and is a big explanation of the wealth that develops early on in colonial society. So to understand colonies, we also have to un uh, understand of slavery and the role it places. In my next video, we'll discuss some other ideas, including the Enlightenment, the Second Great Awakening, and on the doorsteps of the American Revolution. Thank you for watching, and thank you for